Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review Season 2 of Saved by the Bell. And this is the rebooted series on Peacock, or I guess, technically it's a sequel series because, or a legacy sequel to be more specific, as we do have characters from the original Saved by the Bell in this, and honestly the second season they kind of double down on it and bring them in a lot more. You even have a couple of couple of scenes with like Lark Voorhees, you have a lot more Zach Morris in this season, which, you know, this this show is really starting to lean into the fact, which got cancelled, so won't be leaning into it much more at all, but it's like, this feels like that 90s show in 2021, when this was second season was released, and it's just like, I kind of enjoy that fact. It's stupid, it's silly, it's campy, and if you're open to the fact that it's silly and campy and weird like that, then you could have some fun with it. I do think some of the things don't work, but we'll get to that. So I think it's important in this season, it starts to really focus on that legendary Valley versus Bayside rivalry that we get from the original show and leading up to Spirit Week and Spirit Competition, and I think that's a fun thing. There's definitely a lot more of, like, budding romances in this season between new characters with each other and some of the legacy characters with each other, and we have at the center Daisy, who's more or less our main character, played by Heskiri Velasquez. I really enjoy her. I think, you know, she is a type character. She is that, like, that A person who's just constantly needs to be on top of things, doing things, needs to get everything done. That type A personality. And she has herself a bit of a love triangle in this season as Mac Morris, Mitchell Hogg's character, who's Zach Morris's son, seems to be developing some feelings. And my thing with Mac, like, I appreciate that they try to give him depth with this whole trying to get out from under his dad's shadow, but I feel like he's more, a lot of the times he just feels like a caricature of Zach Morris, which doesn't really fit because Zach was already over the top and ridiculous in the first place. Um, Josie Tota as Lexi is just a big personality and is really trying to sell, like, that obnoxious, like, rich kid kind of vibe, and there's some fun gags with her. I do really like Aisha, played by Alicia Pascal Pena. I really think she gets one of the most interesting arcs this season, kind of realizing who she's really attracted to and having this budding relationship and, you know, the challenges of, like, they get rid of the football team because it's too violent. She joins wrestling. Which, hell is that? Not any more violent. Um, but you have that kind of dynamic. And there's a lot of young characters here. <laughs> Quick shout out to Principal Todman. Mike, John Michael Higgins is hilarious and really goes all in on this performance. But really, you have Jesse and A.C. Slater who get a lot more time here. And you get to have them having a rebutting relationship. Slater starts going to therapy. Jesse's trying to get over a divorce. They acknowledge that the character from Showgirls is basically just Jesse Spano. That was just a bad part in her life. I'm like, what? And especially with the legacy characters, they really go full meta with a lot of the humor. There's one point where Slater's just like, yeah, college years. I had high school years, I had college years. Because you know the college years show. And those kinds of things I thought were kind of funny. Um, there are definitely moments where the show's trying way too hard to be funny, and, like, wink, hard winking at the camera, and it's just like, okay, you need to relax. Um, but I do appreciate their budding relationship. They have a really sweet, uh, ode to Dustin Diamond at the end of the first episode of this season, which I thought was really nice, and in the show, they do a little thing for Screech, and in general, I think... Honestly, I was kind of growing on this show. I don't love it. I don't think it's a great show. I think it is trying way too hard, and too many of these characters feel a bit flat, cliched, and... But, like, it's campy and fun and silly 
and so is Saved by the Bell. So it's just the same kind of campy and weird. It's just 90s campy and weird in 2020s, which might not fit for everybody. I thought it was a fun time. And I'm a little sad that it got canceled. And I won't see any more of these characters. But I feel like this last episode of the season, they laid down enough where it's like, most of them have like a nice happy moment where it could be like, okay, well, they'll just have happy lives after this. Let's just pretend that. But those are my thoughts on season two of Saved by the Bell. Let me know what you think and let's talk some TV. But thank you as always for tuning in and supporting you or Wasteland Reviewer.